ஹலோ எவ்ரி ஒன் இன் அவர் ஐஏசிஎஸ் டியூட்டோரியல் சீரீஸ் லாஸ்ட் செஷன் வி சி தட் சோர்ஸ் குவாலிஃபை ட்ரான்ஸ்ஃபர்மேஷன் வித் வி டன் தட் மேப்பிங் வித் ப்ராப்பர்ட்டிஸ் ஆஃப் தட் ஃபில்டர் அண்ட் த சார்டர் ஓகே டுடே வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு சி தட் நெக்ஸ்ட் ப்ராப்பர்ட்டிஸ் ஆஃப் த சோர்ஸ் குவாலிஃபை ட்ரான்ஸ்ஃபர்மேஷன் பிஃபோர் கோயிங் டு தட் ஜஸ்ட் வில் டூ தட் ஸ்மால் ரீப் கேப் ஓகே so when we see this source qualified transformation it is active and connected and we can deal with that relational or flat file like that okay the main point of the source qualified is convert that source data types into that informatica native data types okay now we'll start a war uh, practical sessions uh. now we can see that source qualified properties uh. for that i'm creating that mapping create your mapping okay here mapping it is there create it once you are creating the mapping means we will get the two object that is source and target click on the source and go to your source yes and give the connection for the source we already given the connections i am taking my source connection that is oracle connection i am taking and select that object from that hr schema that is oracle here my object is employees so i am taking my employees table select this one and click on okay then we have that one more option it is there in the source that is preview the data with help of that we can able to see that what are the data is available in our sources okay close this one and see the fields okay these are the data it is available in the that is these are the column it is available in the our source in our source we have that option that is query option it is presented in here we already see that that a filter and a sorter these are two things we already done the mapping in the last sessions today we are going to see on that advanced level properties here we have that three things it is there that is pre sql post sql and sql override first we'll work on that post sql here my query it is that is my scenario it is i need to update uh, the salary of that employees okay for that i am writing the dml statement statement uh, update table name it is employees set uh, salary equal to 40000 okay so here i am telling that i need to update uh, the salary 40000 for that all the employees uh, i am not telling that particular employees i am telling that all the employees now we'll move on to the target before moving to the target just check that i am giving the sql statement in post sql only okay now move on to our target here in the target take your target connections and here my target connection it is oracle only and take your object here my object it is employees that is t underscore employees click on ok here and preview the data here we already in the last sessions we done the mapping so the data is populated in our target for our understanding purpose i just do the truncate target table but in real time we should not do like that okay for our understanding purpose only i am doing the truncate target table then move to the field mappings in the field mapping when we see that the source column and target column both are same only so we do that smart map here with help of the auto map sessions so once it is a done means smart map automatically it will map to that all the fields from the source and target just save the mapping once you are saving the mapping means the state it is it will be go to that valid state okay then click on the run it will start the running the our mapping in the run time environment that is our secure agent run the mapping it automatically moved to that monitor stage in the my job sessions we can see our monitor page refresh your mapping it will be in that starting then it is queued then it is running then it will be status it will be succeed okay refresh the your page one or two times it will take the tau 130 seconds 20 seconds only it will take it and it will give that output result 
now see here in that instance name click your mapping one so here i am uh, taken my record from the sources 105 record i taken and that all the record it is populated in that target we can do the cross verification in oracle sql developer now move on that oracle sql developer now we'll check on that in our uh, oracle sql developer here my target it is like that core schemas okay so in the core schema i have taken the table it is like the t underscore employees retrieve the data from that table t underscore the employees select star from okay select a star from t underscore employees select the statement and run it once we are running means here we have given that conditions in our post sql that is update employees set salary equal to 40000 so based on that we got that uh, uh, salary it is updated 40000 so this way we can uh, do that cross verification uh. now we done that post sql now we'll see on that uh, o sql overrider now we'll do that uh, source qualified properties next uh, sql override for that i am taking that uh, before mapping only that is what we done in that before uh, execution that mapping only i am taking maximize this window now go to your source okay then uh, move on down that in advance sql override there we want to write our sql statement okay for that i am downloading my session log okay i am downloading my session log and i kept the file in the my file explorer now i'm opening my file here and see on that session summary that is session load summaries okay so while you are seeing on that session load summary means there we can able to find out our sql queries okay so in that sql queries go to that sql queries and copy that sql queries properly in that uh, select statement okay see here in that sql queries select hr.employees.employee id that is it is a uh, hr it is a uh, schema name and employee it is object name and column name it is like that we want to write in that real time also i am just copying that all the statement uh, that is a uh, sql statement and go to go to the data integration there in sql override paste it uh, and also i am giving that conditions here that is where my employee id it is uh, employee id uh, is between giving that the range i am giving that uh, uh, here uh, that is 120 to the that is 120 and 180 okay so these many employees only i should present it uh, so like that i have given the conditions uh, in sql override if you are giving that uh, the statement in uh, sql override and also you are giving the condition in post sql means it will take that sql override only it won't take that post sql command okay now you can see that practically how it is going on okay now do the run once we are running our mapping means we can uh, know that which statement it is running uh, okay now go to that my jobs uh, there we can see that the mapping it is starting in the stage uh, then it will be that running uh, then it will be moved to that succeed state uh, or otherwise it is like the rejected state uh, refresh your pages one to time two times so see here we get to that 61 rows is get up updated okay that is it is taking that sql override statement only it is taking the it is not taking that post sql statement so we can able to know that here see here in the post sql we update the employees okay but once you are writing the queries on a sql override it will take that sql override only not the post sql 
and also we can do that class verification in our core schema oracle sql developer just is execute the c underscore employees see here we are getting that result set there the total number of the records in t underscore employees it is 61 record it is presented that is 120 to 180 record it is presented so this way we can do that cross verifications after done that our mapping okay so uh, today we see that uh, about uh, post sql and sql override try to do you by universal form pre sql and uh, you can able to find out the difference between that post sql pre sql and sql override how the it is going on okay thanks for watching